We right, I think. I think we're here. Just see who comes on. Yeah, we are live, and there's people joining us. Hello from Arthur. Um, he's got a little bit of bribery going on here. Look, it's just my finger he's eating. Honestly, it's not a big, tasty, bacony type chewy, is it? Yes, I know. He's been good at that. Yeah, so welcome everyone. Um, as you see, Dave is actually, he's had to go to work. Can you believe? He has to go to work, which is that's, that's so old fashioned. Going to work. Who'd want to do it? But um, so I haven't got Finn, but I've got a warm blooded teddy bear instead, Arthur. Um, so I'll let you go down there. You can relax. But welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, and so we, sorry we had to put it off uh, last week. It's just, uh, Dave wasn't here. I wouldn't, then uh, my wife's parents had their 50th wedding anniversary, which was great. Here's Becky coming. She's going to try to go through as quick as can and not be seen. I was surprised she didn't fall flat on her face, quite frankly. <laughs> so so <clears throat> I said, honestly, I say to them, don't worry about it. Just walk through. It's not a problem. But they're so paranoid. They just go <laughs> into the corners of the house. Uh, and usually they steal Arthur, which um, I'm very upset about. So he's still looking for food. But he's got dog bed over there, which is a bean bag. He's got another bean bag over there. He's got probably six viewing platforms in this house. So he's very fortunate. So we're going to talk to him about today. We're, we're going to try to pick up on Dave later. If I see him come up on the screen, because he's actually working. So if we can, we thought it'd be a good idea if we can do a live, depending if he's got enough. 4G or whatever, so that we can, we can show you around the van, show the dog in action, so to speak, and um, let you know what he's doing. So that that would be a bit of fun. That may come up, it may not. So what I thought I would do is um, where it all started, and I promise I'll try to make it, it's, it's, it's going to be as lighthearted as we can. Uh, please, by all means, shove through the questions and things like that. Um, thank you for the comments coming through. I've actually linked to the comments now. Um, Brenda says, hi, thank you very much. Europe, Ari, that's got to be from Mick. Uh, Mick Bland, his wife has got the best accent in the world. Uh, as northern as northern you can get. It's, it's music, I tell you, it's just amazing. Uh, Mary Ray, thank you, Harry and Arthur, it says. Uh, and, uh, so, and Liddy says, Je uh, Jimmy should be a stand-in. Yes, I know, she's a popular one to be standing in. Um, I'm going to stick her on the spot one day and uh, she'll have to see what happens. Mm. So what I'm going to do is really just go through how um, Twitter started for me. And if there's any potential cops or thinking about wanting to start a, uh, a Twitter account, I started in about, well, my, my, my Twitter says I started in 2009. Well, I actually started about 2015, 16. And I had, because I had like 60 followers and I was just... I was just following uh, Formula One drivers because you can get into the nitty gritty. You can get them when they've been spun off the track and they're angry and they put a tweet out. It's it tends to have not been vetted by their media team. So you tend to get a bit more of the truth. So whoever you follow, whatever you're doing, and as you know, if you're following on Twitter in particular, and I know we have people from Facebook, YouTube and a podcast as well, because this goes on Spotify just just search for Finn and Firearms and you'll get all the podcasts from previous events. Of course, we had Nick Knowles last week. And so that was really, really good. How old is my puppy? He's 10 years old. He's 10. I know. He's getting old. He still looks like a puppy. Um, but anyway, and then I'm just going to go through a bit. And I, I am denied whether to show you a bit of something on Twitter because it's a little bit embarrassing for me. Um, but I'm just going to do it because it shows and a very short clip of it. And it was to do with a nine minute video, which I'm not going to play. I'm going to play about one and a half minutes, give a quick talk to you, and then another one and a half minutes to explain why I sort of fell into, fell into Twitter and some of the landmines I've stepped on in the distant past and really where can go from there. All right. So basically what we got here, <clears throat> thank you, Tracy saying hi, thank you for your service. Thank you. They did pay me, so it was fine. I just kept turning up and they kept paying me. And I was lucky to love to, to live in Devon and Cornwall. So we were very fortunate. We do have crime, but it's so much better quality than other areas. Um, uh, Harry hugs to your puppy, Stephanie C. Finn's losing out on a lot of love when he's not here. This is what happens. This is what happens. 
Um, so anyway, here we go. Uh, I promise you there will not be a load of this stuff because I don't like lots of text. It's, there we go. I don't like lots of text because it's boring stuff, but it will sort of show you um, a little bit uh, about, it will just progress because I tend to tangent everywhere as you probably well know. Um, and so really it was just give a rundown for people who were not too sure uh, what I was doing, what it was up to and things like that. I was uh, involved in armed response and I was involved in armed response. You know about that stuff, that was good. Fast cars and guns. And again, they paid me for it, it was just amazing. Um, and of course I was lucky enough to be on road policing, which is traffic. That's dealing with a whole load of uh, road death, unfortunately. And, but I tell you what, I just enjoyed finding the closure, doing the scene management, getting the best out of absolute chaos. And that's the bit, enjoy is probably a wrong word, but it, it gave you a lot of um, job uh, satisfaction, really, on that. SIO is an old term, really. I mean, I still use it, but it's LIO. It's, if you hear LIO in roads policing, I hate words roads policing. It sounds like you're policing the quality of the tarmac. Everyone knows what traffic is, don't they? So it's always traffic as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I need to change. Uh, SIO was senior investigating officer, but the crime, I don't think crime liked us having that. So it was uh, lead investigating officer, I think is the new term. And it's the person who um, uh, guides an investigation into a fatal road traffic collision. And that manual, road death investigation manual, which was, and is now in a different form, it's all part of the College of Policing, APP, but basically that was taken from the murder manual. So it's not like on TV where you get some superintendent saying, right, this is what we're going to do, and right, and they decide to go off on a tangent. It is a very much quite a set procedure, and decisions have to be made, but it's to make sure you don't forget anything, and you sort of count. If you say you're not going to do something, you say why you're not going to do it. So that's the SIO side of things. Um, Pursuit Tactics Advisor. So as fun as it may be to go chasing cars all around the, tra uh, the, the streets, and we had to do a fair bit of that, but we'd again have to say, well, is it because we know who they are and they just haven't got any insurance? We'll post them a summons through the post, job done. So we don't need to do that and we can minimize the risk to other people. And some, sometimes you think, well, he's in a pub, he's drinking, he's going to drive home. Well, we tend to stop it before he leaves the pub. Um, and he's still in a public place as he goes. And he, we've got contingencies with stingers and things like that is what we used to do or I used to do. So it's all about minimizing risk, maximizing the safety for everyone around. And so there's a lot of thought put into this uh, because over the years, there's a lot of criticism. And of course, the operational finance commander is quite a bit of a mouthful. That's what I was as well. These are all things I used to be. I used to be somebody once. Um, this was like team leader of a firearms job, okay? So it's operational firearms commander, and then you'd have someone in charge of tactics, a bit higher up, and then strategy. So so where, if you had the circumstances of somebody who was a uh, reported, I can see a man in a house or a flat with a gun, and it all looks a bit aggressive because I can hear shouting, and they call the police. The police then have to decide. Sounds uncanny, that one, doesn't it? Um, the police have to decide what it is they are going to do uh, about how they're going to handle it. And, you know, they, they have to go through various options and it, it will be, you know, uh, what's the information and intelligence we've got on the address, on the people who live there? Is it likelihood? You know, is, is it, if it is a 12 year old boy and they know it's a 12 year old boy and it's uh, in, in an area where 12 to 14 year old boys aren't stabbing each other, then probably think, okay, we'll go in nice and softly on this. If the intelligence is, look, yeah, it's a bad old area, so it could be something. Um, the witness hasn't been able to see everything. It's mostly silhouettes or something, I'm presuming, on a lot of these things because we don't know the information. And so you need to find out the tactics advisor will advise, sorry, the, the uh, yeah, farm tactics advisor will advise the, uh, ta um, the ta guy in charge of the tactics and the strategy. And basically, we'll say, look, um, what do we know about the person? Are they identifiable? Do we know who they are? Do we know who their associates are? What access they have? Vehicles, so on and so forth. Do we know the capability? You know, so what's their capability? Have they got previous for armed robbery? Mm, puts it up there a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, and what's their intent? Do we know their intent? You know, and then, so what? what is presumed and what is fact? This is 
what goes on in every firearms call out in London, in, Nash in every police force in the whole country. So when you hear this, like, oh, they just did this to a flat and whatever, it's tosh. There's a lot of processes involved to go through. What level do they think this is, of course? And then they've got to basically assess the threat and risk and develop the working strategy. So we what do we want to achieve from here? Well, we want to get the person, we want to get any innocence to remain safe in the house, and we want to get the bad guy out. But what's the priority? Innocence, safe in the house. That's the priority. And if we can arrest someone, bonus, because we don't know they might wander off and do something somewhere else. And we can't say, yeah, it's going to be fine. I'm sure it's fine. You know, we can't do that because you can imagine what would happen if it wasn't fine. And of course, then you've got to consider powers and policy as well, haven't you? And, and so what laws have we got? Is it just justified? Human Rights Act says, so it, is it justifiable? Is it proportionate what we're going to do? You know, is it is it lawful? Is it necessary? You know, and is it accountable? Are we auditing everything we do so it's all information is collected to be looked at afterwards? Um, and then and then we identify the options available to us, and then we'll do a job. And then we do that job. We take action. We'll review what's happening because usually then it goes off to somewhere else and goes into a different direction. And and then it goes on like that. So I just wanted to give the impression with that is that there's absolutely no sort of oh flicker coin. Do we go in or not? It's not. There's a lot of involvement with that. So. That that's what we've uh, and it's fun. It's fun because it's. I used to think being in a car, jumping out and pointing gun at the people, was great fun and quite adrenaline adrenaline filled. Um, and it was nice to get the bad guys under uh, lock and key. Um, but you know, it was just as much fun. I found in the end was doing the tactics behind it. Um, and so, farms tactics advisor would speak to the tactical um, farms commander and and the two of them are working this thing out together um, and getting to an end result and then you're doing a knock on the door and they're one in custody, no injuries, no damage. That's, that's a bonus for everyone, I can promise you. So that was just relevant to things that are going on at the moment. And don't believe, don't believe rubbish, social media trialing by social media. And remember the Met can't, because it's all usually about the Met at the moment, the Met can't just put everything out there at the moment. There's too many things that restrict it, um, which is frustrating because you only hear one side. Um, so that's the farms. Uh, and the operational farms, to attack, I should say, is the one is the team leader goes in. The farms tactics is what I've just told you about. And the VIP protection officer, I was very lucky to be literally stood next to the Queen five times on jobs, um, to have over 15 years, literally hundreds and hundreds of jobs with all the royal family and uh, very lucky. And I was able to bump into Obama for coffee once as well, but not as a guest, I must admit. But that's another story. Um, that was it. So where have we got? How do, how do I use Twitter? What did I actually want it to do it for? And I realized, well, I didn't want to. I didn't need it. Uh, I didn't really understand it. I had 60 followers and I wasn't interested in followers because I was following, you know, uh, Formula One drivers, really, because I wasn't really into football. And and then something sort of happened because I was involved in road safety side of things. We used to do a, a speech to um, school kids or young people who were just about to drive or who were just driving. And it was really getting them in their, their souls to, to really, uh, and it's called Learn to Live, really, really effective. It's national wide, but each local area does it. And so they get an emergency services, even it could be a firefighter, police, paramedic and then they get a next of kin that comes on a mother of a deceased or something like that so it, it's really it's quite motivated it gets people into you so this is what this is what i am now i'm going to show you a video here it's, it's a nine minute one which i'm not going to show you it's one and a half minutes and it, i say this is a bit i'm going to it's slightly embarrassing but it gives you a bit of a run out i'm explaining the story of a double facial i went to um and it was near exeter and it just explains um the circumstances, and this is what got me into Twitter because this one went quite quite viral, shall we say. I think it was uh, nearly 90,000 hits and a lot of um, people retweeted it everywhere and, and sent it around everywhere. But here we go, uh, let's see, let's see what this does, shall we? I wonder though, 
If Adam had looked to the left-hand side of him and seen his front passenger seat, if he'd actually seen what he'd done, what he'd caused, then maybe that reduced the motivation that he had to live. And maybe the hope that I was trying to give him just wasn't enough and he found it hopeless. If he had just looked to the left as the dust was settling just after the collision, he would have seen a body of a young girl and she had an obvious head injury. And that was Anna, and Anna was 21. She was looking up into the sky, but there was no pained expression on her face. There was no struggling for air like Adam, just this peace, peaceful serenity across her face. But her eyes had no focus. I knew that the car had slammed into the back of the highways lorry and had spun off. I know that Anna was killed immediately. She was gone before I'd even got there. Her body, still dressed in the clothes that she wore the night before. I remember her bare feet and the footwell with the flip-flops next to them. It's strange because when you talk about these instances with colleagues or with home, at home, you get a mental picture of the scene. It's not a video you run through your mind, it's a snapshot really. And I couldn't work out why with Anna's it was her bare feet and her flip-flops and the footwell. And I soon realised, I guess, that it's because that sort of thing signifies holidays, sunny beaches and happy times. And here it was, a scene of complete death, destruction and devastation. That's why it sticks in my mind. Right, so basically with this, just to fill it in a little bit, is uh, I'm going to just play you another, um, exactly the same um, length of video. Um, but it's, it's something happens in there that, because this was, I was working today on that when I was brought in to West Point in Exeter. It's like a driver training place. And I was called in to say, Harry, could you do, um, come in and do your your talk that you do and and it's it's not done on script or anything like that you just basically go through the story in your mind and you can visit certain places in your mind you maybe didn't for a while and it can can you know have a little cheeky catch up on you sometimes you know and um and so i did this but they said but if if you're not available sometime and we can't get someone to come and tell their account then we don't want a gap um, because a thousand students have turned up or 300 or 200 students have turned up depending on where it was so so they said we'll we'll video this and and so i say this was nine nine minute video and it sort of started with with a run up and came to a story you know and i had no idea i came to a conclusion i had no idea that this was going to be any good and i thought i'm speaking to a camera and a a, a woman standing next to the camera and I said, I've never spoken to one person before. This is really stressful. Um, because if it's a big crowd, it's it's part of the road safety thing I used to do, even though I was frontline as well, is it's, it's just a mush of grayness. And there's nothing personal with it, you know? It's, you're not looking into people's eyes like that. So anyway, so this is um, this is how it continued. And uh, I promise this is the, 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 last, the last bit of the video anyway. It's after I do a lot of posing. I was told to, all right? <laughs> so what had happened? Well, Anna had gone to a party in Uffcombe with her boyfriend, but she wanted to come home early. So she arranged with a mutual friend, and that was Adam, to come back. But Adam had been drinking. The car was in good condition, a clean license. He was insured, there's no problem. But Adam was twice over the drink driving limit. And Anna didn't realize that. She got into the car and it cost her her life. You see, it doesn't end there, does it? Because Adam wasn't a bad lad. Adam lived with his dad and he was a trainee electrician and his dad now lives alone. Anna, well, her boyfriend came home expecting to see Anna there. And instead there was a police officer welcoming him home. And then you've got Anna's mum. And you've got Anna's mum, who lost a beautiful, talented, very happy daughter that day. And I promise you, she'll never get over that. I 
Okay, so basically, I have a bit of wobbly moment in there, and I'll tell you why. Because <clears throat> I, I know her quite well now, and the mother you're talking about is Ali, and she went on to do a few anti-drink drive campaigns because her daughter uh, was the young girl who was killed in the road traffic collision and the driver had been two and a half times over the drink drive limit and they were coming home it was very early in the morning and whether he fell asleep and he drifted across into the back of a highways truck and it was very early in the morning i was first on the scene to this um and it's one of the ones that just uh you know follow you around, around a little bit um how that wonderful woman copes i don't know but um because you have i have that little wobbly moment because as I'm talking, she then, Ali then walks in to do her talk, her speech. And I stupidly look across to her as I mention that. And of course, it doesn't affect her. It affects other people, doesn't it? So that's how that happened. So that went on. They put that out. I didn't think it would go public, but I was happy for it too. But so the whole series of these on Learn to Live and you can follow. And if, you're, if you've are if you got two teenage kids, grandkids or whatever, they must really push them to make sure their schools, make sure they go to this because it really um, gets them, they come out and go, oh, okay, I've changed my opinion on this. And even if they're a passenger, they it gives them, uh, empowers them to say, just slow the hell down or I'm going to throw up in your air intakes, you know, if they're being driven by a boyfriend or, or you know, um, how sexist, but it's, it's usually tends to be that way for a bit, but you know, whoever's, whoever's driving. And uh, so, you know, that, that's the situation and it, it worked. So that went off and Philip Schofield was very kind enough. He retweeted it after um, Britain's Got Talent or whatever it was. And, um, and it went, uh, it went further on. So it, it, it got quite big. And then it got to the point really when I was, being spoken to by my force saying, look, you know, have you considered going to, uh, have you considered doing a social media thing for the police? It's probably something they'd never regretted more. Um, but they were brilliant and they have been great. But, and they said, have you got a Twitter account? So you really, because you, were, you, you put this on your own Facebook thing, again, I wasn't massive into Facebook, social media at all. Um, and uh, Angie, I'm so sorry. And this is what you hear. My niece was killed by a drink driver. You never get over it. Absolutely. And this is what, this is why when you get traffic officers, they really give a shit. <laughs> I'm not in the police. I can say that. They really do. And that's why they put their heart and soul into it. And they go to, I mean, I went to over 150 fatalities. Um, some six-year-old children, uh, elderly people, um, teenagers, cars full of teenagers. Um, and it was, but it was finding a way, getting results for the family. If there needed to be someone brought to justice, then that happened. And, and that's what takes so long. You know, why, why roads are closed and things like this. But anyway, so why, what happened? So I said, okay, well, I'll start a Twitter account. And, and it went on for a couple of months. And I knew, and my thoughts were really good. Devon and Cornwall Police, absolutely phenomenal. Really good process. They don't say, right, if you if you mess up, we're going to do this, this, this. Now, what they did was, if you mess up, look, here's a way that we can hopefully try to prevent it in the first place. It was advice. It was assistance. It was, you, you can't leave it for 24 hours if you haven't got, look, you've got to report everything to other people, don't report it here. Um, because if you... Um, and you, more human rights standards are coming in where I think that's where a lot of forces are closing things down because you have to see regularly in case somebody said, I was abused, I was uh, you know, a victim of a crime and then you've left it because you've gone on holiday. You can't do that. So you need to have, it's very for specific pe people who are interested in doing that. And I was 25 years in the service at this point and I just thought I need something else just to keep my interest up. And I really found this was better than chucking out speeding tickets. Do you know what I mean? So then I put this tweet out, um, and this one basically said, sorry, guys and girls, someone threatened to jump off a bridge, but now off and traffic moving. Take time to clear. Because you can see there's one side of traffic there, and people were just out playing football, and, uh, and this was like three hours, and it didn't look it there, but it was three, four hours or something, and it was hot. It was really hot. And it was August, you can see 25th of August. So it's surprising for August, in fairness. Um, and this was just north of our, just on our boundary. So it was running into Avon Somerset and they were dealing with this. And I knew that they were safely called off. 
the bridge. And so no one had been hurt or killed, thank goodness. And I knew I had to phrase this very carefully. You had half the amount of letters at that time, didn't you? Um, so I had to get it basically. I couldn't say, ladies and gentlemen, this is the police here. Um, an event has happened, which we're pleased to see is clear. Because I knew that once the situation is clear, it takes half an hour before um, people at the back manage to drive through the collision site. It takes about half an hour. It's a long time, even though you say well, there's no obstruction, um, depending on how long the queue is, of course. And that's all. I, and I thought, OK, th sorry, guys and girls, a bit informal, but I can't. They, there wasn't enough room for ladies and gentlemen. Um, and threatening to jump off the bridge. Now, I had to do a photograph because otherwise it could have been a library photo and people aren't interested in broadcasts. You know, those, you know, drive safe, kids, don't have fun, and a photograph of a police officer's hat or something, you know. It doesn't really catch attention. And I actually thought as well, I thought, what is my facial expression got to be? I can't be like, and I can't be like, you know, I've got to do something. Do you know what I mean? I really thought about this. And I thought, well, oh, that's okay. So then I went off. I went off duty. And I went home. And I thought, well, that was good. Um, uh, and then I looked at my twi Twitter. And this is what I saw. Uh, okay. And I thought, well, that's not bad. I'm sure it will die away. And then I saw more and more and more. And it was basically this bizarre, you know, police officer takes bizarre selfie. Now, this was August 2016. And all I'm saying is, I wonder, well, I know for sure, actually, it wouldn't. Um, because I'm wondering, this wouldn't happen anymore. It just wouldn't happen. Because no one would be bothered that a police officer has said, look, the road's clearing. Um, no one could take umbrage that I was sort of uh, minimizing the seriousness of somebody in suffering from mental health. It wasn't like, oh, how inconvenient, you know, that side of thing. So all those things were going on. I thought it was careful, but that's what happened. But this is the difference. This is the difference with Devon and Cornwall being run by Sean Sawyer and uh, now, now the deputy um, Paul Neverton, my two heroes, because they saved my skin enough time just by actually not, just by understanding that actually nothing is you're not doing anything. As long as you're not doing anything that's malicious or unprofessional, um, although there's a big gray area of what people think should be unprofessional, then, then they'll back you. And that's how I've been with my section of officers as a sergeant. I say, I'll back you all the way. As long as it's not dishonest, malicious, um, then I'll back you all the way because you've got to give them the freedom to make mistakes. And, you know, that's not that's so easy to say sometimes. So then this is the big difference that happened. I don't know if I'll just enlarge this slightly because Brenda Brookshaw was the head of our professional standards, professional standards department, PSD. And so he was superintendent level. And he said, Harry, the PSD view is that this was an excellent use of social media for public information. Keep up the good work. Now, I tell you now, that was a brave thing for him to do because he was going, he did what he thought in his guts was right. <clears throat> and he could have hidden behind the, well, we better wait until all the information comes in and people thinking, you know, because you, what you get with Twitter, of course, is you get people say, uh, for example, they'll say, the first one will read police officer talk, talking about road clearing. And the other one will say, that's terrible, how uncaring for the person. And then the other person would say, have you heard what Sergeant Tangy said? He said, thank God that person stopped wasting our time. And then before you know, and that's why I've been really, really careful about ever deleting a tweet because your original, your original information, your original document needs to stay, all right? Um, I have done a couple when I thought, way, hey. uh, but, <laughs> but that, that's, the, that's the issue there. So then of course, then you've got one, you've got Brendan, you've got people like, I, I don't know where Chris Heffin Scott's gone to. I, I hope he's all right. He was chief inspector, maybe his force stopped it, or whatever, when we got promoted, left, I don't know. But what a nice chap. Um, so fab to see force support. Selfie showed humanity, which is vital to policing and totally appropriate. And this is just, oh, music, music. They're supporting police officers. Devon and Cornwall, thank you very much. And they're exactly the same. This is why I love working for the force. And if you're fed up with your force and you want sunny weather all the time, then come and join us, my ex one. 
They're brilliant. Um, so, but in that, isn't that cool? And then you get um, other ones come up, like uh, Chief Superintendent Paul Davies. He's retired recently. He was Assistant Chief Constable here. Um, don't let them get you down, Harry. You do a fantastic job. Now, I needed this. I needed this because it was a very uncomfortable few hours I had when I woke up and, and saw that. Um, after not looking at it for quite some time, I'll tell you. Um, and then going through, uh, we, we would get sort of uh, great to see the spot. So members of public, thank you, Tom, if you members of public were saying, ah, oh, finally. So you, there's a lot of silent majority out there who, well, you know, I don't want to get involved in this squabble or whatever, but it sounds a bit ridiculous and things. But um, public get fed up with delays due to police incident and deserve to know the real reason. And, and I think, and going through, um, you know, Nick Knowles came on, bless him. First time I really knew him. So thank you for, for that, Nick Knowles. Seriously, Daily Mail, is it any wonder? And this was 2016, all right, for everyone. Um, uh, is it any wonder any police feel under siege, our police feel under siege after officer finds time to take selfie headline? It takes two seconds. Exactly. And basically, because I knew if I put that on my Twitter account, yeah, the holiday traffic are unlikely to follow me. Um, but I know who does, and that's the traffic reports in the local area. And guess what they do? They stick it on the local radio, and they stick it on um, their, you know, their, their, their local uh, traffic report, Twitter sites, and things like that. So people are in the traffic. How long is this going on for? Searching for stuff. And there it is. Bang. So that's the reason it was there and so useful. Nick Knowles followed up with police engagement on social media is more personal, humanizing, and bridges divide caused by ridiculous police bashing daily mail headlines so again 2016 26 this was the day after early in the morning that was and other forces and things like that were um were, were offering their support so um but it was a lonely moment i have to say and it was something that was worth um going through it was a learning and i, I just realized it was at a point then when i thought if i'm doing a twitter account as long as I don't get drunk and say stupid things and everything will be fine. And I've learned it's not like that. It just isn't like that. Um, and so I found that every time I stepped on a landmine, there was usually another landmine to step on. But the force would say, I would get a text on my phone and say, oh, Harry, next time you're in the headquarters, could you pop into corporate comms so we can have a chat about something? And I'm like, oh, no. No, I knew it was like, yeah, okay, well, we've had seven complaints. And what I think you don't realize, perhaps a lot of people don't realize that if somebody says, so for example, I did a video of a really bad road uh, um, aquaplane, and I went to six individual aquaplanes in one evening. It was torrential rain. And I'm, I was on my own in my car because others out there doing their stuff. And I was traveling to blue lights and uh, the cars were just keeping the same same speed as me and uh so I, I i'm dealing with another one so i put a little video out where it was all the road was cordoned off on uh, two lanes of traffic were cordoned off by highways agency there was i had um selfie video so i could see what's behind me it was there were two lanes of traffic away i knew the traffic was slow moving now because of the uh the cones that had been put out by highways agency cracking job that they do there was also the, the smashed up cars behind me, giving me other protection. Um, and of course, 30,000 people looked at that. Um, and I had two complaints by people saying, um, well, I don't think the police should be uh, on Twitter. And the other one saying, I don't think, I think it's very dangerous to do a Twitter account, because they talk like that, uh, to do a Twitter video whilst on the motorway, extremely dangerous. And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I verbally shot the um, corporate comms person between both eyes by saying, let me deal with the two complaints. You listen to the 28,998 that were neutral or positive because the motorway was my playground. I've done it for 30 years or 25 years. And I knew it well, I knew how to be safe. So let me deal with those. But those two complaints, I haven't caught up with technology, modern ways so that unfortunately they had to be dealt with in the same way as if I was walking down the street and said to someone in police uniform, and it can be proportionate, but it still takes someone to write down a report, read it out, phone the person, speak to me, maybe get an account, look at the logs, look at the Twitter account. Da, da, da. It's time they haven't got. They time they haven't got. And with the Met recently, um, the deputy chief uh, was saying how 
unfortunately, with the um, it was Sir Stephen House that was right. He was the deputy commissioner, and he said, unfortunately, when Candice Williams tweeted and and tagged the Met Police in with her tweet, it automatically for them became a public complaint. Why? Because if you feel aggrieved, and I'm not blaming Sir Stephen House here, because I don't know if he's, if he's in charge of that policy or not. I doubt it, to be honest. I really doubt it. But if you're not, and I think he's tied up with the, the mayor uh, there as well, and he's really keen to actually allow the alternative side for the um, Sir Stephen House's, the to allow the alternative body-worn video. So if you get a 30-minute clip of an incident, such as Bianca Williams, we can talk about that freely because that's what happened in the public domain, then he said, no, we, we need to be able to, but we need to have some sort of policy in agreement because I think Sadiq Khan holds the, the reins on that one is what he was saying, which uh, I think I'm right in that. Um, and the same thing with the rapper whose father was tasered and came down the stairs. And with both of these, um, Checking at the moment, even up to this date, no formal complaint has been made. Um, but obviously, the IOPC, Independent Office Police Con um, Complaints, have to uh, deal with the absolute public uh, backlash that goes on. And so they have to look at it. And of course, they found no problems. And that's why there was no formal complaint, I imagine. So we need to sort of really, my view is, update the Twitter side of things. If you get people saying, well, I don't think that's right, that, by all means, if you get a real formal complaint by saying, do you understand? I think your police officer got a little bit drunk last night and said some inappropriate things, and so be it, you know? Anyway, that's what I think. Um, <clears throat> so it's important then to bring in humour as well, I think, as well. And you've got to be a little bit careful with that. But so. So after the whole event of the bridge, I said, thank you, Mail Online, for my 200 extra followers. I intend to spread more good news police stories. Hashtag I owe you. I thought, oh, I'm baiting the bear here. But I thought, bah, whatever. If ever you feel eh, whatever, uh, and you're a police officer, don't do it. But I tended to do it quite a bit. No, I didn't, to be honest. If I'm really honest with you, I measured this out very carefully. And I thought, I haven't said anything inappropriate. I've kept it quite... Um, um, optimistic, it was happy, It was. I wasn't criticizing or damning anyone, it was basically having a bit of fun and trying to turn it around. And of course, the next thing I would write uh, is, on a lighter note, no controversy uh, was caused today by myself, uh, no selfie is available, new day. So it was like, I wanted to, you know, Put something under it, whatever you call it, and then um, and then start again. Really, that's what I was wanting to do, and that's what happened. Really, and then I thought, well, I'll shove something like they know because on Twitter, if you do this, I thought so. This was turning up at a job, and it was a, a load of sheep on the roads, and so on and so forth. And I managed to catch two of them, and I didn't know what to do with them after that, but. Um, put them over the fence but I thought this is a time for a selfie isn't it and this is how I got my name for selfies I think from the bridge and this and whatever uh I can tell you now one of the funniest replies I got to this was um that looks like a face I knew a wife should see which I wasn't allowed to reply to but it was quite funny I have to admit I can say that now um but you can see so I put that on a tweet uh, great teamwork with roads policing to recover two sheepish miscreants on the main A30 I mean at the end of the day these can wander into the road there was no um, fence because they got through the fence and it could have been straight in. These are big lumps and if a car hits them on a motorbike, that's serious stuff. And the sheep, it's a light thing. Um, so that's what we did. So I thought, uh, and then I thought, do you know what? I bet you it's probably going to be about three hours before the local paper pick up. I think it was pretty much three minutes and there you go. Police rescue sheep from A30. And they know that. <laughs> I mean, I got on quite well with Devon Live, to be honest. Um, I think the local press, they don't want to kill you off because if they kill you off, they've got no other information coming in. So they don't want you, they don't want to say how terrible this, that, and the other, but they also got to make headlines. Um, and uh, the press is the press. I found local press absolutely fine. Main, mainstream media, if they were good, if they wanted you and it was all happy, great, but they would kill you in a second if they had, they want to wipe you out. So that would, that was that side of things. And then, this so I had a bit of video and I thought what do I do with this and I thought I can turn this into a tweet now this got well this got 8,800 likes and this has started to really bring up and you think well why is he doing all this funny JP stuff because what's actually doing well how is it educating the public how is it actually 
you know, he's just showing off doing all these things. I should explain why. But hopefully I can show you what happened with this one. Because anyone who hadn't seen this, the actual thing I said on this was, took my Border Terrier Jack Russell cross to my... ...searching for drugs. And this is because not that my mother-in-law takes drugs, I have to say. Um, far from it. But anyway, I was saying that I can't remember the thing. But I was saying, yeah, he's, he's looking for a wannabe drugs dog. Uh, and so that's what I, let's see. If, let's see if this one plays. And guess who turns up? Because he can hear a dog going mad round and round and round. So yeah, he is the the star of that. And then he went, so it it went pretty mad for that. You can see, I mean, eight thousand likes in there, and I probably had probably fifteen thousand followers or something, then maybe maybe less or whatever. But um, and it's not. But you can see the reason why I was wanting to do that, and I'll try to explain a little bit more as to why is if this thing will work. Is basically you need to get. Yeah, big audience aren't, aren't great if they're the wrong audience. And I'm constantly aware that you've got an echo chamber, that people are going to agree with me and they're going to say, yeah, you're great. And it's not a true reflection of the public out there. And so it's always quite nice to actually, um, I, I, I don't automatically block people. I, I mute them if they're just an irritating pain in the backside and they just want to wind people up. Uh, <clears throat> but I don't like to block them in particularly because um, it's actually quite nice to get sometimes you get some people who are maybe not too delicate about giving an alternative view, or maybe it's through a little bit of ignorance in the nicest possible way. They don't know. Um, and I can sometimes spark a little bit. And you do think, you know, all right, yeah, I overreacted uh, on that one. You know, uh, I just apologize and go from there. Um, so then really, here's, here's what I'll just large it. So now you have them, educate and inform. So you need, it's quite nice if you're in the policing, part of business or whatever, is now you've got people you can actually do your um, education, you know? And so what I mean by that, I did seatbelt campaigns, um, my seatbelt selfie, and did a hashtag seatbelt selfie. Well, not quite my famous dog, supporting, tis, uh, and it's all the road safety initiatives that are going on. Uh, phone ignored and belt up, lie, live another day. Okay, so um, that's, uh, I suggest that's not how you belt up your, uh, your dog. But you can actually see that his eyes are transfixed on a chewy that he's imminently going to get as a reward. All right, so that, that's uh, on that one. Um, and then, of course, uh, you've got other sides. So this is a learn to live thing. And passionate about trying to reduce unnecessary road dress, North Devon today. So I was going up there doing a, a little chat there. And of course, then, if you look at that, Sean Sawyer, so he's the chief constable. He wouldn't necessarily have known what me and the rest of the Learn to Live crew were doing. So now the chief knows. So that's quite good. So it's not only telling, it's not actually saying what the public know, but it's actually, you're also saying what uh, your bosses know. And so I was thinking if I've got an ARV unit and the traffic were having to be at one point when they literally took all the money away from us, the government did, Theresa May, uh, then, then, I was thinking, well, if they're looking at ARVs next, thinking, well, you know, do we need them? It's actually useful for the bosses and, and the public to know where they're spending their taxpayers' money, you know? Um, I think it's been helpful for dogs on that as well. So anyway, dog unit, I mean. So, and then going f uh, from that one, we go, oh yeah, I mean, and this was, so it goes into newspaper reports as well. Um, and that's, I think that's a six-year-old one I was talking about. It's not cheerful, I'm afraid, but it was exactly the same age as my son. And, uh, but it is getting yourself out of the moment and think, right, we've got to, we've got to investigate this. Um, and I know the, the person who'd been doing CPR on this poor little chap had, um, the police officer, he was a police officer, 
I think his nephew was the same age and the family liaison officer was the same age, uh, had children of the same age. So it was a real desire, but that is the real team thing of the policing. And that's the best thing about policing. Um, it wasn't sort of pull yourself together. I, I, I'd tell you now, I, I had to go to the, I attended a lot of forensic postmortems as well. And, and you can imagine for a little six year old, but it was the, the team camaraderie with that and the support is, was phenomenal. Um, so, but it's getting information out letting your bosses know road safety side of things. And it's nice to build the numbers to do that because, and then what I have is certain rooms in the background, direct messages, but rooms that if I need to put something out or they do, we can whack it out to a lot more people. Um, if the board members of that private room actually agree with it and they don't have to, and we don't, and we're saying, mm, no, it's not one, that's not for me, that one. So it's really, really good, helpful network. And now, now this one here is a bit, I, I had a, a oh, I'm saying hashtag bullocks, all right? All you read something else, shame on you, okay? Filthy minds. But it was something that I thought, it's, it's always nice if you're doing a, twi a tweet to do something, just twist it a little bit, but it's still code of ethics and all that in the police and all that sort of thing. Um, but actually, it, it's useful if you can, uh, a picture catches the attention of somebody. Um, and so bullets, we contained, uh, were contained in this trailer on the A38 at Chudley and caused a delay of two hours. All clear now and they are unhurt. So, but you see who liked that, who liked it, press like was the ACC. And I went, oh, okay, that wasn't so okay. He thought that was all right. It catches the attention. I'm not saying bullets, um, I'm saying bullets. And I could always go, oh, oh no, I meant bullets. Why, what did you think? <laughs> but, but, uh, but so there we go. And the, the other tweets that really work is I just messed about with the basic Photoshop stuff. And instead of putting a, a swollen river in there, I was just saying, it's time, you know, it's that time again. Don't risk that flood water. It could be deeper than you think. Um, and uh, now this one got a couple of complaints. Um, our gang is bigger than yours. Uh, hashtag the end. I mean, at the end of the day, we're in charge of the criminals and we will catch them and we'll lock them up. And yes, we've got the fluffy side, side of us. Uh, that I hope you've seen of, of mine as well. But at the end of the day, if people need catching, they need catching. This was at a scene of a was it Travis Perkins burglary uh, once. Uh, I won't say the town it was in. I don't know why, but I just won't. And um, and the helicopter was above. And we caught the burglars. Um, helicopter found the infrared stuff. Dog handler went in, caught. And it was just good. Our gang's bigger than yours. And it was a little bit, oh, that's a bit macho, isn't it? Well, sometimes we have to be a bit macho. And I say that men and women. We need to be a bit strong, powerful, get in there, get the job done. And then we need the more delicate side of us as well. Uh, so that's, and that's, there's no set rule. And this one was, again, really popular because this showed, now this, this piece of equipment I had on the left, I mean, that's just a standard PDA. People went, oh, is that a special view thing and all that? But it was three grand's worth of um, infrared stuff. And I searched a whole load of wasteland and it was freezing, freezing cold. And it's three hours later. And then on the bench in the distance, there was a ropey old bench on the, in the woods. And I would not have found that person who was committing suicide and just basically really inappropriately dressed, taking a load of drugs and just sat on the, the bench to die. And uh, hypothermic. And that there caught, that found her. That saved her life without a doubt. And um, police dogs exactly the same way they can do that as well. But it just shows, and we use the the infrared and the the stuff. It was really useful stuff. And then, of course, that shows the bosses, not only the public. Hey, that's good. That's what my taxpayers' money's going on. The bosses go, oh, right, okay. Well, we won't cut that from their budget, you know. And it's just things like this. It's getting a photograph that doesn't show. It shows a bit of excitement. This one wasn't. I wouldn't have done a serious injury photograph of this. This was. They walked away from this, but it looks horrendous. Um, and it's just a way of. Um, and that's the, the guidelines, I say, if somebody's uh, son, daughter, mother has been seriously injured or killed, God forbid, you do not want that plastered all over. But I knew it was walking away and it was absolutely fine. Um, and, you know, you can see, but it shows it's always nice to bring the other emergency services into it. Don't hog the light and light yourself. Always say if a dog handler's helped you out, bloody well say a dog handler's helped you out and that side of things. And then what you get is, and, you know, I'd say Tor Bay response have been absolutely brilliant. They did this, that, and the other. Uh, and then they, they're like, oh, right, 
ARVs aren't bad, are they? You know, um, and so it helps the inter-community thing there as well. Um, and then, yeah, I was doing Periscope. That was quite... Um, now, I couldn't... This is interesting because I wouldn't be able to write this myself, okay? But because it's an advert, and this is an interesting thing of Twitter, isn't it? If I, if I said drink, drive, and score a date with a blonde and put a photograph of a, a judge or whatever, I would probably get a few complaints because it's a formal and a brilliant ad. I think it's fantastic. Really, it's humor, gets right to the core, and it's it's a thing of going out, you know, if you're trying to talk, chat girls up or boys up and whatever, no, that's the blonde you're gonna, you're gonna actually attract. And I think it's brilliant. But it was interesting to note that, yes, I put that up on my Twitter, but I didn't say anything about it. Just sometimes it says enough. And also, I couldn't, I couldn't write that myself, could I? Um, maybe I should. And I think things like this, I just look on the internet and you just look at stuff like that. It's, especially if I'm talking, that is really difficult to read, isn't it? But it's, how effective is that? Really, really good. Um, love the blog. Uh, people, uh, people do love that. Uh, Harry, you miss your job. How do you miss being a police officer? Um, no, not at the moment. It's been three months. I'm, I'm quite busy. I'm doing other stuff. And uh, you can have too much of a good thing, I keep saying. And it's time for the next generation now. And I've done 30 years. I'm 51. And it's a really good time to try to do something else. And this is fun. I don't get money from this. I don't. Uh, if I could get money from this, I'd probably try. Uh, but I, I can't. But it's just it's just fun. And I'm enjoying um, a bit of family life. My, you know, my family haven't thrown me out yet. Um, but it's it's good. And then, of course, there's and how many people said, because this is obviously an American photograph. I should have twisted this round first, but then seen how many uh, clever people could see it was twisted round. But, you know, look harmless, shunt, airbag, hips shattered, knees through facial bone structure, embarrassing story to tell if you live. And it's another way of putting a tweet is just bang, 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 bang. And just a photograph like that. It really gets the message across. And again, really went round fast. And people say, oh, who's this Sergeant Tangi? You know, I'll, I might follow him for a bit. Then uh, you've got more of an audience Again, if they're the wrong audience, but if you can get as many as possible that you can then start educating, and then that person you followed because of that learns about learn to live, and they go, oh, and they get onto their school about getting learn to live. That's the way, really. And then the politics. There is politics, because during my pursuit, I'm continually thinking, am I aborting? I didn't, I didn't as it was safe, but I knew that if he crashed, I'd be in the dock. And I spoke with the, again, because of Twitter, um, I was able to speak to the shadow policing minister at the time, Louise Haig, and she brought this on. And within a 20-minute conversation on the phone with her, because one of the followers said, you need to speak to Sergeant Harry Tangi about this, I was able to tell her the problems with it. And uh, I won't go into it, but the law is as such that um, I, could, I could pursue a car doing exactly what I'm told to do, trained how I'm doing it, with a massive amount of experience, and I will still get judged in a court as if it was my elderly mother driving the car with no experience and no training. Ridiculous. And so you get the scenario of, well, if they were driving dangerously, well, so were you. Uh, and so police officers were just spending inordinate amounts of time summons for court, and it was going on for 12 months at a time. It's just horrendous. Slowly changing, hasn't gone through quite yet, but we need to change that because otherwise cops are going to say, you work your minds up, you work, make your own minds up. Until then, we're not pursuing anyone. Uh, and then blogs I got into, and the diversion from my, I think it's gone on a fair bit more than this now, 145,000 readers. So really good way to stick it out on Twitter. Um, and then having a blog post. So if you search WordPress, Harry Tangi, um, you can get these. I did one on, you know, there's a whole thing about a tasers, a whole load of rubbish coming up about tasers and this, that, and the other. So I did a blog on it because I know a fair bit about them. I used them every day. I didn't use them every day. Um, I think I used it once in anger, but I did the red dot dot numerous times and it saved a bundle every time and people getting hurt. Saved life. And I think, I, yeah, I named the taser one, taser, the tool of the pacifist because it saves lives without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, what do I know? I just use it, got trained in it, and uh, see it being used around me and seeing what prevention of injuries it does. Um, so the diversion from my day-to-day -day life, this came out, I popped this one up recently because remember um, Top Gear Man uh, came up and you say, ah, oh, bloody waste of time, wasting my, you know, how, oh, we know it's an accident, bloody clear the road. 
And everyone was saying, ah, you're heartless and heartless. And I thought I'd try a different angle. I said, yeah, it's a reasonable argument because people do say that. So why is it so long? And so then I, I, I said, but you might want to read this. And then Jeremy Vine picked up and is one of his producers, I think producer. And next thing I was on Radio 2 with the old earmuffs in BBC Plymouth on the Radio 2 radio show. And it's about half an hour. So again, education, bang, out there saying exactly why it takes so long and exactly why it's so important. And the fact we're not just wasting time. But, um, you know, that's, again, that's the really, and that, that's the priorities. That's why I like it. So what does Twitter do? I say for PCs and sergeants, and you could relate this to a private company anytime, you know, it engages with the public. It's educating the public when you need to. Informing senior officers and command teams, so your bosses, exactly what you're up to, is a discussion platform for police officers with all forces and the public well-being, making contacts, and fun. Now, I'll tell you, I can't tell you the details, but there was an incident where we had an issue, and if I put it public, there could be a massive headlines and scaremongering. So I put a simple tweet out saying, does anyone else have this? Da, 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 use these. And I got 12 forces come back in two days. So yeah, we have. So then I sent each of those contacts a private message, direct message saying, right, this is our problem. Have you had it? And eight of them went, hell yes. Now, can you imagine? So then I went in with a bundle of papers and I said to the superintendent, I think we've got a problem here. And that was through Twitter, not alarming through the public. So you don't have to go on, for, on the public forums and things like that. You don't have to make it public. You can do it subtly if you trust your audience. Um, and... Uh, and it's like, can you imagine if they say, oh, Harry, can you go and find out from 43 forces who else has got this? I would have called. I would have called the department that it was relevant to. They would have said, yeah, no, no problem here. Um, because they was, could have assumed so much more. And I think probably four months later, I wouldn't probably have been much further on than I was. Two days. And the problem solved because it, it was all there. It was fantastic. So there we go. Um, and it, it does, it informs and updates the public, um, uh, that side of things. And I won't go back to that. I'm bored of that one already. It had writing on it. Um, and now the difference between corporate and individual accounts. This is a good one because I think Essex was one of the last ones to do it. Um, a lot of people are doing these, um, they're putting out there um, to say, you know, what do you prefer, private or corporate? My view is you need both. You need the corporate. Um, so important because you need facts facts and what's going on and if they're looking for bad people they've vetted the what photographs they can put out and stuff like that really really important and the personal one should be only by those who want to do it who are interested in doing it because you need to put a bit of effort into it who are going to be ready for a few complaints because they will get it uh, i didn't i must have got an absolute handful of complaints in my 30 years but in the last five i had two misconducts two action plans and probably about seven local resolutions. No fault of my force, and through no maliciousness, no narcissist, and each one of those was stressful. Um, but it was a process that every complaint has to go through. So we need to, come on guys, Can we? there's no stomach for it, and that's why forces, in my view, are saying, shut down the private ones. And they some say, well, they're all, People are confused, the public confused, they don't know who to follow. So we shut down the private ones and some are having a very few private ones, which may be the answer. Those who've proven themselves to be, you know, a safe bet. Um, and we don't want just everyone because it's not for everyone, you know? Um, so I think that's that's a question. We want both. Um, and then corporate account needs to represent a brand, a professional body, doesn't it? So uh, that that's why you need, you need that. And, um, and you, we need to avoid controversy uh, by using positive tweets only. That's if you want, if I want to, uh, so his mind got into a bit more politics. And if I'm really honest with you, it allowed me to actually, because I had the followers and I had the vetted blue tick and things, which I had to leave when I left the Devon and Cornwall sign thing. It, it is useful uh, because it opens doors, but so I will try to get it back, but it, they're not doing it at the moment. Um, it does open doors, that means you can do much more. Um, but yeah, it, 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 um, it avoid, uh, avoided controversy by using positive tweets. I, I would just say, this is good, this is good, and just have a bit of a break. 
and stay away from the criticism. Don't go into negativity. Because no one, and if it's negative, make it balanced. But if you just want a holiday because you're a bit stressed, well, it just be, oh, brilliant work by these dog handlers, da da da. But make sure it's still a good tweet and stuff. You know, that's what I was thinking. And if you use, uh, if you are unsure of a photo or a tweet, um, share a direct message with your colleagues, and I would shove it into a room saying, "What do you think?" They go, "No, <laughs> what are you thinking?" <laughs> but most of the time, it was. Uh, you might get a problem because of this, this, this. And I'm like, do you know what? I think you're right. And uh, when in doubt, delete. Don't put it out there. That's what I do. You can make it individual by using initials and end of the tweet. So if you are doing a department one, which is just important, like a traffic unit, then a lot of people in MPAS, MPAS stopped. No, they went national, but they've gone regional in fairness. And they're still pretty good. But there was Adrian Taylor, who was fantastic, putting... Brilliant photographs, great captions, put his heart and soul into it. Absolutely loved it. And we'd, you know, and I'd retweet his and say, mate, that's being missed. I need to push that out. And then he'd do something. It was fantastic. And it was such a shame he had to leave it. Ugh. But um, they wasted, they'd lost people there. Um, but, you know, if you are in a departmental one, then like a neighborhood beat one, uh, speaking to the cops on PCSOs here, then just put your initials at the end of the message. So at least it, because why would I put myself out and try to find the photographs in there? And if I shoved it into a corporate thing and it just went out as a standard thing, you know, you need some work satisfaction too. You need to say, you know, and then people following can go, oh, HT, I quite like, oh, right, where's his HT? I'll look at theirs. And that's another way of doing it, perhaps, um, which I've seen used. I, it's not my idea. And I would say top tips. Oh, shove these, shove these on. Uh, top tips, get your corporate comms press office on side. Don't slag them off. They are trying to do a job with minimal staff. I fit, One of mine jokingly said at once, Harry, if you carry on the way you're going, we're going to have to put on two more staff. You know, and, and chief constables, they have to weigh up. Do we put five cops on the street or or? three um, press office. And of course, the obvious is we want to put more cops on. So we try to keep that uh, media side down, keep them on side, learn with them and, and try to reduce stuff. Have them involved with simple policy based on advice, not threats. The policy I read was like, welcome, welcome to Twitter. Let's see if we can do this. It wasn't like, don't do this. You're going to get in trouble. Work together. You need support of the force. Um, things will go wrong. So don't try to avoid them. Just think, like, how damage limitation. Try to avoid them, rather. But don't think you'll avoid them and get frustrated when you're not. Things will go wrong. I knew from the start that if I wasn't being negligent, dis dishonest, or malicious, um, I couldn't get into trouble, a lot of trouble. And whatever people say about that, and there might be the odd example somewhere, um, there might be an investigation, but they, I knew I wouldn't be sacked. I knew it wouldn't be a gross misconduct. So it would be management advice. It'd be a horrible time to go through. But I knew I, I wasn't going to risk my pension on it, as they say. Um, and I knew that every tweet I did was I made sure did it go with the code of ethics. If was it was it honest? Was there integrity? Was it was it meant well and was misunderstood and went badly wrong for various reasons? You know, um, I, I mean, the good one, the one before actually was really good is agreement that supervisors speak. That's what my force did. They said, because you could get an inspector. Oh, I hate Twitter. No, you've got to come off. Got to come off. And you've lost a lot of good work. So they said, they put emails to all the bosses saying, you've got to come through us if you want to delete one. And inevitably, they didn't because they would say, right, what's the problem? OK, this is the process. Let's us lead it. And they would chaperone that person. Uh, and then the boss would think, actually, this is quite good because it's making my department look good. And only have willing to volunteers. Don't force people into it. Use mild humour if you feel comfortable. I'm, I'm being able to find any humour, as you, as my family will be able to confirm. Search hashtags to find relevant information. That's quite good. And Google random police images. Um, I mean, I, I, I time's up, guys. Um, I will leave that now because I think I've worn you all out. Uh, we've still got quite a few followers. So I'm really, thank you very much for that. That's jolly kind of you. Um, but yeah, all I'd say, thank you so much for that. I just want to give you a hint of what the problems we are behind Twitter. We don't just fire away at them. Things inevitably go wrong. And I've had much worse than that. You know, the 140 mile an hour thing, that was because the first one, 
was through tight traffic and people say, oh, we really like that. We like what you were looking out for. And it's quite, it's quite good the way you have to think of so much. And the next one was uh, a mate of mine um, going through some another, I can't remember, was it a town? So it was very different from countryside. And the next one was motorway. And I, I put 140 mile, this is what 140 mile an hour looks like. And of course, taken on its own sounded a little bit, look how fast we're going. It's amazing. So again, the force backed me up on that. So any uh, looking at the questions, I, I apologize that there have been lots of um, uh, just looking at those. Uh, Mike Panet is there. I just missed yours, Mike. Ah, I lost you. I lost you. Um, so apologies for that. Um, thanks for such a great talk. Thank you. I'm just staggered. Everyone's still here. So that's really nice. Thank you, Harry. Just sat listening today. Enjoyed this. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, well, Dave will be unhappy because he would have hoped it was a mitigated disaster. No, he won't. Uh, John Jolo says, with the same work, depending on rank and length of service. So, yeah, but do, do you know, it's an interesting point, actually, John, is because I could, as a sergeant, and um, I could do far more exciting tweets than maybe uh, an inspector could because inspector is representing a lot more people, is their staff that they look after. And mine was more of a personal account from the scene. This is my personal account. It's not necessarily everyone else's. And so that's why it's a lot easier. And, and, and inspectors and superintendents, they tend to go to a lot of boring meetings. So it's not, hey, look, we've had a great meeting today. We talked about safeguarding, you know, which is really important stuff. And you can see the progression they get on, but to the general public, that's a hard sell. And how do you put a photograph on there that is exciting? Because if you just put text, People go, oh, text, text, text. And then they go, oh, blue and white, blue and white. What's that color picture? What's that? And that's exciting. And it does, it, it attracts people. Not because, you know, I made them sound stupid or anything. You're just attracted to colors. That's what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, so motivational, How? Thank you, David. That's really good. Thank you very much. Uh, as there's no less cops, the individual accounts are ex excellent for community policing. I think so, because if I was sitting in my house, and say I was, you know, an elderly person, and I didn't, you know, say I was one of those that couldn't get out of the house too much and whatever, I could follow my neighbor beat officer, I could follow my dog unit that, that are around my area, and I can see what they get up to. And, oh, there's the helicopter over me, let's just... Ooh, little. Um, and they can, they'll can they tell you what they can. And don't you feel so much more informed is the official term, but it's just nice to know. And then when the, the local council's saying, sorry, Harry, we need you to pay another 60p a week for your council tax, I know what it's being spent on and I know whether it's worth it or not, you know? So that's, that's the idea around it. Um, I was hoping that Dave would come up. Do you know Dave is the busiest dog handler in the world? He has the most exciting job. Um, he gets so many with Finn before and Hero now and amazing results. I keep going on about it. Oh, I'm reading this book at the moment. Who's, uh, you've got Finn's book. Everyone knows about Finn's book. If you haven't read it, ridiculous, read it. This one here I'm reading at the moment, My Hero Theo. Amazing. And I'm not just saying that. Really honest. Oh, my God, really honest. Gareth Greaves really um, tells you, if you're anything interested in the policing, dogs, anything like that, so really, really good. And um, he's going to be a guest sometime in August. No? I oh, know. He will. So there we go. Why Why the police fired you? <laughs> the police didn't fire me. I did my 30 years. And I'll be honest with you, I get a pension after 30 years and I didn't want to risk it. I didn't want the... Because I learned with the pension system how it was. There were people who joined and they felt uh, secure in their how much pension they would get. And it was worth investing that life and the shifts and the stress and the injuries to get that. And then it was taken away from them um, if you were a certain experience level. Uh, so I knew anything could happen. They could just change the law, just change the law. So I got out. But I've got to say, I've been farmed for 23 years. Um, I was frontline before and, and my firearms in Devon and Cornwall you were doing everything still because we got less gun crime so we had a lot of, lot of knife crime we had a fair few jobs a week but we didn't have our armed robberies every day and so we were used as a dual rolled for roads policing for traffic so we were experienced trained in traffic and and that and and that's really how I got my main interest in road death which sounds pretty horrible but it was, I've explained why, but um, have just finished that it was great. F 
fun, fun and, and upsetting. Oh, the Theo, is that Joy you were talking about? Theo, the book I was talking about. Um, yeah, I'm not, I promise you, I'm not gonna shove this down, but that one's my book. If you haven't seen it, it's Farms and Fatals, get it from Amazon, Farms and Fatals. And that's just really a bit of a, um, it was all the, it's all the accounts that I just listed down that just stuck out in my mind that um, we would just, we would just chat with, it's usually military guys or cops or whatever. And you would laugh, belly laugh about these stories. And there's some sad stuff in there and it's real, just all the emotions. And so I shoved it in there and it's sold really well. So that's on Amazon. Um, and, oh, I wrote this book. Who's that? Uh, I wrote this book. Is that John? Comes up. Mm. Is he? Are you declaring yourself? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. But anyway, we're having a guess. So that's that's that one. Anyway, is that's Theo? Have a good have a good read if you haven't had it, Gareth Reeves. And that is available. It, well, it's published by Harper Element. He got a proper publisher, so so uh, it's probably available everywhere. Good. Oh yeah, and John says I mean he's in the last couple of chapters. There's a really funny story with that. But um, so good for uh, that's brilliant. I am over now. I'm way over, so I do apologise. Only Nick Knowles was allowed to go over, and because Dave's not here, it's like having the parents gone. I can get on with it, do what I like. Thank you so much. Um, four o'clock next Saturday. If it isn't, I do apologise because things happen. Like um, Dave's shift had to be changed last minute and things. And he's a professional and he's really good like that. So thank you ever so much, guys. Um, this will be available on Twitter, um, Facebook eventually for D Dave, if it's not already. Um, it is on YouTube, my YouTube, Harry Tangi. And we're doing, I do a podcast. So I put the audio version. Um, so I have to describe a lot of photographs on here and I put that on um, Spotify and stuff like that so it's available so you can just listen to it and do the mowing all right thank you guys appreciate it indeed and we'll see you